Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be doing a disassembly, reassembly and internal review on this Jingong JG067. Hi guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today or find it useful, please do consider liking and subscribing because you're going to be really helping me out. And uh, getting me seen by the YouTube algorithms is helped along by clicking the like button. If you do want to become a member of the channel down there, there's a join button. Doesn't always work on Apple devices. Just 99 pence a month for bloopers and uh, custom badges and a private section of my Discord just for paying members as well. And it is only 99 pence. And I massively appreciate people coming and joining. So today um, we're going to do a disassembly on this. Obviously, just to confirm as a disclaimer, this is classed as a toy gun and anything we cover on this today is only applicable to this toy gun and not the real steel counterpart. Obviously, keep that in mind. So we recently unboxed this and I will put a link down below to the unboxing of this little beauty. And today we're going to do a bit of a disassembly and just have a look at what's going off in there. So first thing I've done is I've already lifted the pins out that hold the handguard in. We're obviously going to take the mag out as well, get rid of the mag. And I'm just going to slide that cover off, making sure that the pins are out on both sides. And uh, the suppressor will just twist, quarter twist, qu clockwise, and it comes off. Get that out of the way. Now, if you want to take <clears throat> all this front end disassembly apart, I seem to think we... Don't need to, but I'm going to do anyway partially just to have a look. We're going to have these two screws here in the end. Phillips heads. That's one. Seem to think we partially need to do this anyway to get the hop and barrel out. Pretty sure I can do this, <clears throat> the gearbox, without doing this bit. So there's the front sight post coming off. Uh, and then we've got two screws in here and it looks like a pin in there maybe we'll have a look at that in a second now if you wanted to split this piece in half there is two little screws one here and one here and those will allow you those will allow you to split this actual uh, assembly into two separate pieces if you wanted to now, just be careful on the back of there, there it went. There's the little bolt out of there, a little nut out of there. Sorry, not the bolt. I'm just not, I didn't even need to push it. It just fell out with gravity. I'm gonna do the same on the other one. It's not quite come out. Ah, that's why. I'm going to have to hold it in with my finger while I unscrew it, just because the bolt came out at the nut, even I keep calling it a bolt. There we go. There it went. Push that out. And get that out of there. There we go. So now, if I bet that is a pin. No, it's actually a screw, wow. Okay, so basically there is another screw. I thought there used to be a screw in there. Am I gonna have to split this in half? Looks like it. Well, this is a little bit fiddly, isn't it? Never mind, that's one. Oh, there we go, we should be able to do it now. There we go, so that's come away I just undid the back screw there and that is that's the screw I was just undoing then there's the little uh, nut for it so that was in there if I take that out of there now let's push you out from that side there we go then I believe there we go the whole, wee, there we go. The whole front end comes off. 
So that's just a spring inside a tube that compresses back into the receiver. There's our wiring assembly and our fuse, which gets uh, stored neatly up there. Now, you should hopefully be able to see that there is a rod on there, in there. That rod is what your spring slides down onto. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect the, um, the hop adjuster so that we can remove the hop out shortly. So this arm should traditionally have a little O-ring on here. And that little O-ring just helps retain this arm in place to stop it just freely adjusting. Now, don't get me wrong, it's secure in there, or it was secure in there, um, and it may not need it, but I'll probably put one on in anyway because I've got plenty of O-rings. So I've done that. I'm just going to remove this little screw here. And that's lifted that little plate up out of the way as well. Keep that secure. Uh, and then that will allow me, when I get inside, hopefully, and it looks like I'm gonna to have to split the body further. We'll deal with that when we come to it in a minute. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, just remove the stock assembly. So we've got a flathead. Flathead pin there. Uh, screw, there it goes. I'll push that out. Now these will only go in one way because the, the end of this little uh, screw has got, bolt has got some teeth on it, as you can see there, hopefully. You can see those teeth. And that will only go in this left-hand side here. So I'm gonna keep those together. Now we're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna pull very carefully because under this side is there it is. So I've pulled that off. And there is, much like the G3, we've got a little plastic sort of catch thing for the stock. So I'll show you the orientation of it there if I can. So that's the... Get that close to the camera. That's the orientation and it sits in there like that on top of this little metal spring as well. So those are out of the way. The other thing to note as well is in this stock as well, you've got some sling loops. Now if they, they shouldn't come out, but if they do, they're like a, a metal thing. I'll show you, hopefully you can see down into there how they go down and around. And I don't think they're coming out there better than I remember them being. That's good, we'll get that out of the way. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this pin out here. Now remember why oh, I disliked working on MP5 so much. Now this pin, this one from in front of the trigger here is a different length to the one that we took out of the stock. So please keep them separate so you know which is which. Now, all right, next thing, let's take this off. It doesn't want to budge yet. Take the top side off, because we'll need that when we split the body shortly. I'm going to remove this screw here. the body starting to separate. I'm also going to remove the fire select, uh, the uh, mag release screw as well. That's going to help me separate the body. And there we go. I've just pushed on the bottom and the other half dropped out. So I'm going to keep that with its screw separately for now. Okay. I'm an idiot. I remember now. Totally. I'm back with it now. So basically, um, G3 is a little bit different. You take the pistol grip off on the G3, this, you know, this all slides off. Doesn't happen quite like that on this. On this one, we need to remove the screws from the pistol grip and the selector, and then the lower receiver just sort of slides away from the bottom. There's no sliding off action here. So I'm just gonna undo these. I've already removed the uh, motor plate, which turns out did 
despite the big adjustment screw, it still had the little plate on it as well. So obviously watch out for that uh, dropping in there. And when we get to the end of this, there is a specific way that the, uh, the base plate goes back on. Now I am gonna to need to remove the selector. So I'm just gonna get my precision tools. So got my precision. Let's have a look at what we need in there. It looks like I've got a Torx, a Torx 5. So that's Torx 5 has literally loosened that straight off. And there's the other side of the selector. There's the main selector. It will only go on one side. And there's a little Torx 5, sorry, underneath. So now we're going to pull this off. I can't believe I forgot this. Be careful of this little... Um, cam coming out that you need for your selector. So I'm going to turn it over to take this out now. Ooh, metal bushings, that's uh, new. A lot of selector came out anyway. I'll put that back shortly. Just feeding the motor wires one. So at this point then, we've got another screw here. So I've removed one at the top here. I moved the um, mag release as well. I've moved obviously the one from the front, we've got one here and then the body will split in two coming up towards me. There we go, put that out of the way. And it's just a case of getting your thumbs in between it all and lifting it up. Now there's a pin in there. There we go. So there's the inside of the receiver as you can see. The wires have been taped to the top of the gearbox where they've come up and round the back side, dropped down by the side of the hop unit and out into the front. We've got the mag catch there that is waiting to go back in and I'll show you how to put that back in uh, once we start rebuilding. It, uh, it's just a, a simple case of putting it in like that and that, that is your mag catch system uh, the spring has rolled away it's right there there's grease on that to keep it smooth operating the spring just sits in there like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove these two screws here and we can lift the hop and the uh, electrical wiring and the gearbox all up out and out in one piece This is the rod here that I was telling you about that is for the, um, the spring in the charging handle. So we can lift that up now. There we go. So separate that out. Black nozzle. Move that out to one side. So there's our hop and the little adjustment arm that pulls all the way. So as you move the lever, it pulls it out like that. So that is currently fully hopped. Uh, the barrel is obviously, because I've cleaned it for the range test, very clean. The hop rubber slightly might look off to the right to me, slightly misaligned. Might account for sort of, obviously, a little bit of the inconsistencies at times and things. Now, I would like to have seen another little screw in there just to make it a little bit more secure, but... It's okay, it's not bad. The the lever will, was doing its job and it held um, sort of um, the hop setting well. I didn't notice any particular unwinding during the uh, range testing I was doing. So now we've got that out of the way, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna loosen off, oh, could that have been not, I've left the piston back. I'm gonna undo the bit of tape just on this side just to let the um, wires come back. We're gonna open the gearbox and take a look and then we're gonna try and figure out reassembly. Win, okay. I'm just going to loosen it there. That. that is literally just electrical tape, which is fine. I can replace that afterwards. There goes our wiring. Now, in honesty, I probably prefer the spade connectors to a mini Tamiya because they're a little bit more solider connection, I suppose. Uh, a mini Tamiya, particularly if you're going to disassemble it a lot, will wear down over time. Get those out of the way. 
So we've got Torx head in there. So I'll get my Torx 10. And it is Torx 10. As per usual, make sure you keep these in the right order that you took them out so that you know where they went, just in case any are any different lengths for specific reasons. Obviously, this is a what we call a version 2 gearbox. So this is the kind of gearbox you'd find in a M4 or a G3 or an MP5, but not MP5Ks. MP5Ks use a version 3 gearbox, which is the same as you'd find in a, an AK or a G36. So we've got all those out now. So what we're going to do is do the usual. We're going to put the uh, screwdriver in the back to brace the spring guide, which I can't get very far in at all. It's, it's uh, a screwed together one, so never mind. So I'm just going to lift that out of the way again. Go over there. go over there let's split this there we go so we've got a linear spring it's not mega strong we've got sort of typical, I suppose it's not typical actually, I keep thinking, comparing it back to uh, SEMA 500 series. We've got a uh, bit of a coating of grease knocking about. We have definitely got evidence of some, I'm, I'm gonna say a decent attempt at shimming here. There is evidence that there are shims on every single gear. Um, I'll have a look in a moment. I'll screw the gearbox together and just see um, what the shimming is like, just because people have asked me to sort of pass judgment on. Um, come on, coated in grease, get you out as well. Gear set, nothing special, you know, typical sort of like Chinese XYZ sort of gears, nothing wrong with that. Move those to one side. The uh, cylinder is vented, not the greatest quality, but let's have a look at, ooh, air seals in. Excellent. But then we found this in the JG G3 series that we had absolutely excellent uh, compression. In the G3, I was able to put an SP90 spring out of it. It took one that we typically associate with sort of like 300 FPS at the most in the G3 uh, riz that I did and it was putting out like two, uh, 340 FPS. So the compression is obviously top notch in these. Um, really, really good work. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Let's have a look at what the air seal's like with the nozzle on as well. Obviously, ooh, that is excellent. That is genuinely excellent. There is obviously a little bit of air leak because there's obviously it's an, not an air seal nozzle around there, um, but that is genuinely Really impressed me, I'm quite happy with that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put the gears back in, put a couple of screws in and just see what the shimming is actually like. Look, there's a couple of shims there moved. Even the grease, there's like, there's not a lot scattered all over it's it's an okay job so those of you that don't know what shimming are so basically the gears obviously when you're looking at them we'll sort of stand the gearbox up so as you're looking at the gears we put little washers on the top and bottom of them to make sure that the sets of teeth on each gear have the most mesh from one gear to the next but without the sort of surface area I suppose of the of the gears anything that's not the teeth 
don't touch each other, but also to stop the, what you know, if it's laid down the, the vertical movement, or in this case, the horizontal movement. The more movement you've got left and right, you know, as your motor's turning them, the gears can move up and down, you stand to, start to get wearing noises, it can cause wear, it can cause breakages. And particularly in high performance setups, if you're going to build a dual sector gear, which is DSG, dual sector gear build, the shimming needs to be pretty much perfect. Now, in a typical normal AEG for everyday use, good enough shimming is acceptable, which is what the idea of this is. Is, is it good enough? So I'm just going to put three screws back in just to put them under compression which is near enough the compression that they will be under from the gearbox case. Great, and one of the screws is just broken. So the shimming them, I'm just gonna have a look. So what I've done is I've got my screwdriver here. I'm just gonna see how much side to side movement I've got. There is very little side to side movement on that gear. What about the first one? None at all. Verbal gear. A little bit movement on this gear here. Uh, and then I'm just going to see how easy I can. They're still free moving so that a little bit more shimmy could be done on this gear here. But the other two seem to be absolutely fine uh, and, and solid enough. Um, obviously, if you're going to do a really high performance build, high rates of fire and things like that, I would always take all of the shims out and start again. Uh, there's loads of good shimming guides online um, as well. I'll link to the Airsoft Tech that does, uh, I believe is American or Canadian guy, does an excellent uh, shimming guide. Lift that back up. So while putting those screws in, one of the screws did basically just snap, which I will... Uh, after the disassembly, I will come back and remove that and sort that. Um, but just be aware that obviously don't sort of over tighten or do be careful with the screws because they could just shear off. And it's not just restricted to um, uh, Chinese ones either. I've had the same happen recently doing the KWA uh, gearbox. I've had a screw do the exact same, fitting a gate tighten, putting the gearbox get back together and the screw just literally just clean sheared off. Now, luckily in this case, it's sat enough above the sort of uh, ridges of the gearbox that I'll be able to get some sort of pliers on it or something uh, and, and get it back out, basically. Um, otherwise, I'd be looking at trying to drill it or maybe sort of dremeling it out a little bit or something. I, d I don't know. But I'm fortunate that that should be able to come out. So let's get rebuilding this gearbox then. So I'll drop the sector gear back in. Make sure that the trigger spring is down, which is this one here. The trigger moves it quite happily. Yes, it does. Now, obviously, be careful not to move the trigger too much because if it starts pinging out, it's going to be a pain to get back in and keep in. Um, and we want it to stay in there. And the cutoff works happily. So your cylinder assembly then, you've got your air nozzle, which sits, the little lip ridge sits in the lip of the tappet plate. The tappet plate holds the air nozzle then onto the uh, cylinder head. Then you've got a cylinder, your piston inside with your spring. You've then got your tappet spring that sits on there like that. And what happens is the sector gear pulls on this bit here which pulls the nozzle back to let a BB into your hop unit. And then the as the, um, the pulling part of the sector gear moves away, this spring pulls the tappet plate back forward to push the BB on the end of the nozzle into the hop unit. Then the piston fires forward, the air comes out and forces the BB out. The um, hop unit then lowers rubber into the barrel. The BB hits the bit of rubber, which adds backspin to the BB, which lets it fly significantly further than without um, any hop-up, which has been sort of one of the revolutions, I suppose, of airsoft, really, that before hop-up, you were limited to, you know, how far your BB could just be flung purely on its FPS. 
with the advent of hop up our ranges have significantly increased and obviously people have found all sorts of mods to make it better and further so this spring then hooks onto this little peg at the front of the gearbox casing here When it sits in, we want to make sure that this part here, which pulls the tappet plate back, is not touching it, and that get me screw these clips here, as you can see, sit around the trigger there, uh, and the spring should be pushed down as far as it'll go, and it just helps to keep it in position a little bit better. Make sure that your, I'll take the spring out for now actually, make sure that your piston, as it's not at the minute, and your cylinder, there we go, are sat, in the gaps, I'll loosely tip it that way. So you can see there, it should be all sat flush against the gearbox side and the pistons uh, runners should sit in the runners in the gearbox. You can then, I'm gonna lay it down just, otherwise it's gonna explode. The spring and the spring guide can then go in. I'm not gonna put them under compression just yet because I've got one last thing to put in got the anti-reversal latch. So this stops the gearbox unwinding uh, after you've shot. If you've not got this in properly and it's not doing its job, then your gearbox will make weird noises that you're not used to hearing. And uh, basically it's because this is not set up right. So in this case, I'm just gonna, oops, put the spring on it. So hopefully you can see the little spring there, the little spring arm there. And uh, this gets pushed into the way of the gear that in, interacts with the motor. Now I've pushed it to one side, I'm holding my thumb on it with a lot of pressure just until I drop gear in. There we go. And I've just twisted it back slightly until it engages with the anti-reversal latch. Now if you listen, you can hear that click. That's the anti-reversal latch clicking onto the next tooth of the bevel gear to lock it in place. Now, at this point, this is gonna be a pain because that will jump out all over. So, probably gonna speed this up. Might put a few uh, uh, bloopers on for members from doing this, and then I'll come back in a second once I've got this down and the uh, gearbox shell on. Trying to put this together and some of the gears as you can imagine because of the compression and what have you going off in there are not quite in the right place so as you can see i can sort of see little bits of the posts and things like that so it's just about basically manipulating everything around a little bit at a time just until you get it in now if things aren't sat right it's probably just not going to go back together at all so it might take a few attempts at doing this and i find it's helpful if you've got a thin little screwdriver like this to just help you pull the sort of um, the um, gears into place. So what I've done is, just to make this easier, is I've just done bent a little upwards curve in this part of the spring here, and that's just stopping it from pinging about so much. It still does its job, still works perfectly, but it's stopping it pinging about. I like that look, I can sit, not touching it, 
and it's not jumping about. So now the proof is in the pudding. Can we assemble this without it jumping? There we go. So, not so many expletives needed then. Uh, the cylinder has got a notch in it, just like we found on the G3, on one side to position it correctly where they want it to be. I did find that it helped if I pushed on the tapping plate a little bit to take the pressure off the sector gear so that it sort of came back into position. And that little bend did work its wonders because it kept it nice and where it should be. So I can now loop the electrical wires back over the top there and uh, take those back down. How well the tape will hold now, there's a bit more grease on there, I don't know, but we'll see. Just relieved really to get it done. Obviously this tape is not holding all that well, and it's a good job I've spotted. I forgot the screws, all of the screws. See, even I forget stuff like this. Now I can tip the wires down and we can put this back into its kitsch put it. So I'm just going to lay that down like that. It'll only really sit in one position. At this point, the wiring comes out off the front of the gearbox here, down through this gap and out. Down there, like that. So it should be sat like that. And then the hop unit's going to come in now. And I'm just going to wiggle that into place. This metal clip here needs to stay sort of outside because it's going to screw in line with that. We can then bring the hop up screws back in to secure that back down. Now don't over tighten these because you will just snap the plastic. It's not the greatest of quality of a hop unit. There we go, that's in there, put that round, right. So the next stage then is getting the other half of the body back on. So I'm just gonna bring that in. So I've made sure that the spring is on the uh, mag release. I'm gonna drop that over. I'm gonna make sure that the, sort of the top part of the receiver goes back into the proper there we go, no, not quite. Again, it's quite fiddly to do this. And it's just a case of squeezing it back together. So after a little bit of faffing, just positioning the wires, I finally got it back together. And you just have to make sure that they very neatly run along the top of the gearbox and then down and out the front. So now what we can do is uh, stick in the two screws that were one in there and one in there. Obviously make sure that you keep a track of what screws have come from where because it is important that the right screws go back in the right places. And uh, any that are screwing into plastic like this, I suppose into anything, try not to over tighten them just because you will ruin the plastic. You'll crack it, break it strip threads, you know, any number of things. Uh, so make sure that you've sort of been very careful with it. Um, so the next thing then that I think we'll do is we'll go for the front end and get that back on. So big spring, make sure that that goes onto the rod down in there. 
and uh, feeds onto there we go the um, front of the barrel there we go slides in now this little metal clip here should separate that again there it goes this metal clip here needs to be lined up with this front section here so i'm just going to move that forward a little bit again there we go. so as that comes in feed that into that move it back i'm just going to hold that forward and then i can move that back into place and that just holds helps to hold the barrel up and attach to that now the fuse holder gets clicked into there like that it's just clicked into place nice and easy and next thing we can do is drop in this little plate and screw this back down which was obviously part of the hop adjustment arm so this actually gives the ridges that the hop arm clicks against that's nice and neat next i can bring in the hop arm make sure you hop click it back into there now i don't know what i've done but that's definitely much tighter than it was before so it might not even need the little o-ring possibly might do it anyway just because that's what the kind of guy i am uh, next thing i need is the little screw there we go a nut from there I'm going to put that in then i'm going to bring this back in making sure that this sort of heightened ridge area if you look this was the front this one is the back because so that matches with the back of that little handguard thing and that just try not to lose that little nut that i've put in there so i'm just going to lift that over there i'm sure i forgot something at some stage but it's fine I don't remember mp 5s being this much of a faff. There we go. That's on there. That can now... Is it that one? Yep. That can now drop in there. And I can screw that back in. Screwing in. So <coughs> easy. There we go. Just take that tight. So stupidly, that little screw and its nut didn't need to be uh, screwed in through that. You can just access them to start loosening them off if you need to be, uh, if you need to, but they're completely separate. Mm. right so now that's in there and i can see the screw in there i don't need it in the, there uh, next i can bring back the other two screws and their uh, the nuts so I'll just put that in there Probably going to have to use your finger to retain the little nut while you screw it together. Make sure to put the little screw back in there as well. Like that. Nice and solid. That's fine. I've got the other one of those to do. I forgot just how fiddly these were. That's probably. Now, this is still the original 
Marui designs that they're working on here. There we go. That's that done. The front plate can come back in. Just slides on there. We've got the two screws that hold it in. So that's that bit done. We can slide the hangar on again. Remembering from the unboxing, this ridge here needs to come to the back. Make sure that the thing's tucked away. There we go. That's on nice and safe. Put those retaining pins in. The uh, suppressor can go on. Quarter turn, and it's on. And then we're going to get the rest of the lower receiver on. At this point, we can bring the rear side back in and screw that in. Done. So then, this bit, we need to have this little cam. Now, it's orientation, you've got like the little sticking out bit there. That is what comes into the side of the receiver like that. So I'm gonna rotate it all the way forward that it will go like that. And then I'm gonna delicately fight with the wires like, see what, let's straighten these wires. And an MP5 in this JG067, we don't need to worry about, um, like we're doing in an AR, running the wires round under the motor or anything like that. These are just straight to the motor terminals. One wire in. Now I could do this without the cam in and put it in now, but I like being awkward. So there we go. So I'm just going to drop that in gently. I'm going to keep that down so that the cam stays in there. Hook the trigger through the hole for it. And there we go. It's in place now. And there's the cam. Hopefully I've not forgot anything. I'm sure we'll figure it out. So the selector then comes through from this side and you're just going to have to Sort of rotate it until it slides in like that. And that needs to go all the way through. There we go. It's come all the way through. This one needs to go back on. Now we used, if you remember, a Torx 5 for this. It's flying, everything's flying about tonight. There we go. So whilst I'm doing this, I'm just going to hold them together. And tighten that down. There we go, nice and tight. Make sure it is tight, otherwise that you know that's going to loosen off pretty quickly. And you're going to lose it. Next thing, I'm going to bring in the mag release. I'm going to Push the button down until the two have met back together, which they have. I can feel that they have. I'm going to bring in the little screw. Tighten that down. Again, tight, but not too tight. You don't want to break anything. And we're going to bring the shorter body pin back in from the front here. Again, it will only go in one way. You, know, you can see there's teeth on the pin there and it'll go in. And it's come pretty much flush with this side of the receiver. Screw the other half in, we need a flat head for that. We 
We'll do the stock. Little metal clip drops in there. Little plastic clip, just like we showed you earlier, drops in there. This just slides over the top like that. I'm just going to pull that up like that. I just pulled that straight like that and it's slotted in perfectly. Rear body pin. Drops in. I mean, I'll be honest, you're getting a lot for your money really for six Sixty pound, even at hundred pound, you're getting an awful lot for your money. Um, you know the the compression is excellent in there, so I dare say you'd probably not be far off. Definitely a one hundred, but possibly even as far down as a ninety um, SP ninety card SP ninety spring uh, to get you know the the sort of three hundred ish FPS that you want. Last stage what we've not done yet is just going to screw these Phillips heads back in to the bottom of the gearbox. Again, not too tight because you don't want to uh, ruin the threads. That's that. And then the last bit is the motor. So we've got the red at the front, black at the back. Just drop the motor in. The wires push onto the terminals. And then the motor plate comes back in. Don't forget your annoying little plate there that will spring about. And then carefully position that. Now it will only go, and you can see there that, oh, the wire's in the way. There we go. The shape of the base plate only matches one orientation in this. So you need to get the orientation right. It will look wrong and not sit neatly in the shape that's there for it if you've got it the wrong way around. Drop that in. This is so much easier when uh, not trying to do it on camera. And there we go. We've now rebuilt the JG067 disassembly, reassembly, and internal review, and it's ready to go out and use. I hope you found that useful. Please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.